Well, good morning. Good morning, good morning. My name is Becky Metcalf, and on behalf of Design Centre Chelsea Harbour, a very warm welcome to Conversations in Design. Isn't it wonderful to do it in real life? We have missed our sessions. Well, these sessions are dialogues. They encourage creative thinking and keep our community in touch and inspired. Um, first, some housekeeping. If I could kindly ask you to turn your phones off. Well, we really are in for a treat this morning. The dynamic, dynamic duo, uh, Emily Todd Hunter and Kate Earle, are with us today. And who better to talk to them than Nicholas Coleridge? Um, he's going to really find out about their instinctive approach. Let's give them a really big, warm welcome. <laughs> Well, good morning from me, and welcome to this uh, conversation with the legendary design team of Todd Hunter Earl. Emily Todd Hunter is, of course, the one further away from me on your left, and Kate Earl is the one sitting here. They have worked together as partners, business partners, for 23 years and run a 20-person um, design studio and during that time have produced um, some of the most beautiful schemes in multiple styles. And one of the things that I look forward to discussing them is, with them is how clever it is to be able to do uh, traditional country English, very, very smart London houses, Irish country houses, contemporary houses, houses and villas in numerous overseas locations, French chateaus, yachts, and Houses on the Caspian Sea, all of it. They have just published this very good book, Modern English. Let's hold it up so it can I be clearly, can clearly take my glass seen off it. in real life, um. which showcases some of their greatest hits. I thoroughly <coughs> recommend that you buy it or order it today. We will be discussing six of the houses uh, later uh, during this talk. My thought was to start with a few general questions. Then we will look at slides of six different diverse houses that Emily and Kate have done. Um, and then there will be more questions from me on the subject of what makes a perfect client or a particularly bad client, etc. cetera. Um, Emily and Kate, can I start by asking exactly how you work together? Do you each look after your own projects or do you arrive as a kind of double act? Do you want to start on that? I'll start. <laughs> um, we, uh, we look after our own projects, but we cover for each other and we talk to each other about it all mm. and we communicate all the time. But basically, I run one design team, Kate runs another design team, which is quite good because there's a little mm -hmm. frisson of competition about it. <laughs> um, so, so we, you know, that's quite good. It keeps us on our, on our toes. And, and we're always learning from each other, would, would you say? And we that's have right? to do that, really, because to be able to deal with the amount of projects that we, that we have. Do you critique each other's work? Um, we help each other. We make mm -hmm. yes, sensitive. Yes. Yes. Silently, so, I would hope, away from each other's teams. Well, we have, we Just have, saying, are you sure about that, Emily Robert Emily and I Kime. really share a very close sort of sense of aesthetics. So I think there have often been situations where someone's asked us something, maybe when one of, them, one of us is missing from the office, and then we, yeah. make, we make the same decision. Yeah. So but she are. does say things like, I like everything, but I hate the coffee table, or something like that. Very good. That does, that does. I still do hate She does still hate that coffee table. <laughs> Tell us how you came to work together, because you both, I know, had a life in interior decorating before you became this powerhouse uh, couple. Emily first. <laughs> Um, well, uh, what happened was, was that we were introduced by a great friend, by Kate's cousin, um, because I needed someone to help me, and she, we were both sing, you know, we were both mm. by ourselves doing our stuff, and so Kate came to help me, and then became in, indispensable, as it were, and luckily, um, We were in a tiny all. office in Emily's flat at that stage. Yeah, we were literally under one the stairs. desk under the stairs, yeah. and one chair. 
Yeah, so we, we, we used to have swap. to change, <laughs> swap chairs. We didn't, and we used to stay up all night doing our accounts, you know, and do everything ourselves. It was, it was hilarious. But you had um, had a, a New York period before, hadn't you? I had had a New York period before, yeah. and I had come back, exactly, and, and I decorated a nightclub in New York, mm -hmm. um, which was the sort of the hot nightclub of the time, and <clears throat> I used to get loads of, um, job offers every evening in the nightclub and in the morning they'd, uh, everyone had forgotten about it which was, so it was sort of quite <laughs> low making um, but, um, but yes yeah, so I had a sort of rather amazing sort of Fifth Avenue kind of s moment and then um, luckily I you know came back down to earth and came back to England. Describe your nightclub I'd love to know what you did first what did it look like? Um, it looked like a gents, uh, St James's gents club it was downstairs, and because I was English, but I mean, very young, mm -hmm. you know, early 20s. Mm -hmm. um, and so I filled it with um, old suitcases and black and white photographs of my grandparents and, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. And it had sort mm -hmm. of, you know, U-shaped banquettes and smart wood panelling. And well, it wasn't smart at all. It was scruffy wood panelling, but you couldn't see it because it was pitch dark anyway, mm -hmm. luckily. Um, and it was great, and, and really, um, really a fun moment. Was there a moment. dancing end as oh, yeah. well? Oh, I mean, yeah, this yeah. was like a kind of Annabelle's it was like thing. A, yeah. It was like an yeah. Annabelle's type thing. Old Annabelle's. But, yeah, yeah, exactly, old Annabelle's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and what was the first big job that you did when you became partners? What, what, were you, what was your first kind of look when you were working together? Gosh, what did you I do tell you what, I can tell you Misha's flat. Oh yes. We did I tell you what we did and actually we should be quite proud of this. We did one of the, we did an amazing big apartment on Cadogan Place and we bought um largely one of the first Russians. Really, well one of the first Russians. Russians that came over and we did one of the first sort of apartments in the sort of mid century yeah. mm -hmm. thing and we bought were buying antiques in Paris flea markets and beautiful things and we had an Ivor Bracket did an amazing art collection with with us and mm -hmm. um Gordon Watson and uh, you all know all the of old those, names. Yes. yes, and we Good. all kind of pulled together and put together an amazing collection for this man. Thirties and forties furniture, which yeah. is something which is yeah. now sort of happening again. I suppose it's yeah. around full circle. It's it was a a moment. It was a good How moment. How does your your own individual design eye differ? I've been studying your book hugely, and <laughs> I be, and I can't always work out which one has been done by which. Though I think I now probably do pretty I'm much. I'm not sure that it no. does differ particularly. It really depends on the clients. And mm -hmm. we have quite a lot of repeat clients. Mm -hmm. um, so I have one client that very nicely comes back and back again and likes more contemporary projects. So mm -hmm. that's what I've done quite a lot of. Same um, house over and over again, or lots no, no, of different houses? No, 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 lots of different houses. houses. Um, but at, you know, at the same time, I'll be mm. doing traditional country houses as well, which Emily is doing. So we're always, we like that variety. We're always doing you know, different things within our yeah. design teams, but definitely our look is. But it's is quite very a good similar. game when you're reading yes. the book to get, mm. see if you can guess which project is mine and which is Kate's. Because my daughter we actually did that. She looked at one of them and she went, "Did yeah. Emily do that?" I thought that was a hundred percent. Thought that was yours. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> we, we definitely have a yeah. similar approach. Is there a Todd Hunter Earl look exactly? As I read it, I see. As I look at it, I see house, beautiful house after beautiful house. But I, do you think if what, somebody went into a house that one or other of you had decorated, you would be able to know that it was a Todd Hunter Earl piece? Or are you just so incredibly flexible in what you can do that you can show? You'll be seeing this shortly when we look at the slides. It, um, it, it's the biggest range I've ever seen. You're the exact opposite of a one-note piano. You seem yeah. to be able to play every Good. in riff in every style. That's what we, well, hope, that's what we yeah. want. Yeah. And we hope that people can't really tell mm -hmm. that there's a tot, that it's a tot under our project. But other people say they can, but we would prefer that, that it wasn't. We would like it to be. Maybe there's not a look, but there's an approach, which is tot under our, which is that sort of mix of old and new. Maybe. You know, not too smart, a little bit scruffy. We don't sort of take ourselves too seriously. Very much mm -hmm. listen to the client. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I think well, I'm going to be asking you quite a lot about interaction with clients because I think it's a subject people are terrifically <laughs> interested in. Now, you've called this book Modern English. Um, I'm interested in the English part of it. Um, I'd love to talk about first. Has Englishness changed as far as interior decorating is 
concerned. And what, what does it mean to you when you say English now? And what did it mean to your American um, publishers, who I think helped you choose the name? Mm. Um, I think I think it has changed, and I think this is a sort of there's a sort of a new um, type of Englishness that we mm. you know bring into the mm. into the um, process. Um, it's some of it is new and some of it is as old as time but the, and the oldest time bit is that is that lovely sort of relaxed um, feel and the, 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 we try when we do these projects we really try to have our client walk in and absolutely love it but also that it doesn't look too done it has mm -hmm. that sort of edge of just a little bit hit and miss hurl it in, hope for the best. And um, so I think it's, it's that, that 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 comes across. And it's definitely not the sort of just English chintzy thing. You'll see that although this is a called modern English, mm. there are projects in all over the world. Mm. But it's our sort of English approach, which is about doing it in a relaxed, informal, fun yeah. way. Is that what, yeah. we'd, what we'd say? Yeah. When your people are asking you to come and work them are they sometimes pitching you against others or have they nearly always come to you because they know already that they want it that's a real mix you? I mean almost always unless it's a repeat client then yes we are pitching against other designers I think we, we don't hate often that. know who they are we don't like it we don't like yeah. it but um, you get a bit strong that's like it. inevitable <laughs> <laughs> we want them to come to us and say we only want you and nobody else and that, that's the dream scenario. And do you sometimes turn people down? Yes. I did once. Wasn't that so yes. awful? There was a moment when we were get, I was about to get married, and my future husband, who you know, said to me, listen, you're far too busy. You've, um, you've, you know, you're exhausted at the end of the day, and you've got to learn to say no. You've absolutely got to say no. And so... Um, I thought, right, I'm going to do this. And then I got a phone call from somebody who said that they said, um, Michael Bloomberg has bought a house in uh, Eaton Square and he'd really like to interview. I said, I'm so sorry, I'm much too busy. <laughs> to come. Oh, God, that must As be in... heartbreaking. <laughs> I know, but I those didn't... are two terribly good words, Bloomberg and Eaton Square. I know, I know, I know. Sentence. Can you believe it? Yeah. And I got home and I said to my husband, I said, guess what? I've done it. I've turned down somebody, I don't know who he is, called Michael Bloomberg. He said, he would, he would, you what? <laughs> <laughs> you fool. <laughs> Kate, have you turned anyone down? Not very often, but sometimes. It's such a close working relationship. You have to get on very well with your clients, yeah. and you know very sort of intimate things about them, and, and the, re the relationship has to be good and work, and sometimes you could just know it's not going to. So, yes. We will return to clients, and we're going to have a look now, if I've got this the right way round, and I have... Um, this, we're going to, this is the um, front of the book, and this simply shows you how it's put together. There's an introduction, then country, town, abroad. Um, so it's one of the most simply organized books that you've ever seen. We're now mm. going to look at a country house, and I think I'm right in saying, Kate, this is one of yours. It is, yes. Tell us about this project. So um, this house is um, in the Surrey Hills. And it is a fragment of a, a much larger house, which was built in the 1890s and then mm -hmm. partially demolished and remodeled in the 1950s. It was bought by a Scandinavian couple with a young family who wanted it as their sort of weekend retreat from London with a view to moving there later when their children move schools. Um, it had been done quite nicely, but it was quite sort of bland and mm -hmm. lifeless. And they wanted to, it's extraordinary, it has the most amazing views, far-reaching over miles and miles of, of wooded hills. It's actually, it reminds me very much, I don't know if anyone has watched Room with a View, which is one of my favourite films, mm -hmm. but it's very like the Honey Church house in, mm -hmm. in that film. It's right on there, it's quite can be quite windy. Um, but I think because of their Scandinavian roots, they just love the light, and it is uh, extraordinarily sort of bright. Um, and they wanted it to be a country house, but not with a sort of English country feel. They really wanted mm -hmm. to use mid-century uh, Scandinavian furniture and continental antiques. And, and for every room to be used by the family. So there aren't, this, mm -hmm. isn't, this is the dining room, and this mm -hmm. uh, perspective sketch was done right at the start of the project. But it was very much as a room to be used all the time. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the chair that's there 
by the side of the chimney piece is where the husband wanted to be able to sit and read a book or a newspaper, but that door goes through to the kitchen, so he's not too remote from the family. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, in fact, this has changed a bit, but uh, where that small table is with a lamp is now a uh, games table where they can sit and play chess. And this is used very much for sort of Sunday lunches, Christmas, not smart entertainment. Uh, the shutters are lovely and retained, and there are sort of elements of the arts and crafts mm -hmm. era shown in the plaster work. This thing of doing these, this beautiful watercolour, if it is a watercolour, whatever it is, is that something that you do? Because there's quite a lot of them in the book. It, do you show your client That's very much part of our finished? design process. So we don't always watercolour mm. um, the rooms, but we do draw almost every room in pencil. And it does give the client a very clear idea of how the house is going to look and feel. And you'll see when you yeah. flick to the next one how close to it it, it is in the photograph. Let's go back and forth. And yeah, it's exactly. So it actually basically means that before you show the client this, or to some extent, you've already decided a lot of elements of the room. And the first time they're seeing it is when it's... Yes, after a lot of conversation with the client about how they want to live, yeah. Um, and then really working on furniture layout so that it suits their lifestyle. And then mm -hmm. we will start to sketch and then usually present to the client with a sketch and some furniture ideas. So ooh, here is their bedroom. bedroom. No, their bedroom. tell us more. Yeah, tell us no, more. no, no. Well, we don't need. I mean, you can see actually what you can see in the book is that those sketches on the wall above the card table are yeah. the original house. Um, yeah. And this is. Yes, a mixture of sort of Danish furniture, Swedish furniture, but quite informal with that abaca rug on the floor and just sheer blinds just to filter the light, but no curtains. So we can go to the next one. This is their bedroom, which was a big scale room. In fact, when we arrived, the bed was on the chimney piece wall, which seems a little bit odd for it not to be looking out at the view. Well, it was coming out this way yeah. towards us yes. with its back, with yes. the chimney... Well, so that wasn't there, so we reinstated oh, yeah, the yeah. fireplace and put in a just simple antique painted mm -hmm. chimney piece and a register grate. I felt that it needed a bed that was suitable to the scale of the room, but probably not a mahogany four-poster bed, which is fully dressed. So we had this bed made um, in gunmetal steel but with an upholstered headboard. And they like quite uncluttered spaces, so that's why there, it isn't sort of over-furnished, it's quite lit, light, it's mm -hmm. just got painted walls, um, and the curtains are not too full, so they do in fact use the shutters rather than yeah. pull the curtains, but that softens the With space. With things like the paintings, do you, th those they had already, or you No, them we get? put, I mean, actually a lot of the projects that we do, mm. we do everything. We full do service. everything, yeah. you know, the bed linen, the writing paper, the pictures, all the china and glass. Um, they are complete uh, schemes, really. So ev everything. Um, and then, you, and then you, and you make sure that they're hung exactly yes. right. So they, people, yes. by the time you leave, it's e just... Everything's done. God, how nice. I wish we'd done that. <laughs> <laughs> Not too late. <laughs> yeah. You could fill the fridge as well. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Yes, you almost. Do? I've God. wrapped the Christmas presents, you know, bought the crackers for Christmas. How but there's, marvelous. There's nothing we won't do. Well, you could choose the second one <laughs> as done, well. While yeah, you're I've probably done a few of these. Oh. <laughs> now, tell us about this. Bathroom. So, this is, uh, this is her bathroom. There are two bathrooms off this room a smaller shower room for him with the dressing room in it, and this is her bathroom dressing room. This is on tree level and overlooks the view in the garden. So, I felt that this needed to be green, really, to work with the outside. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we needed a whole elevation for the cupboard, so that's why the bath is in the middle of the room. I think the milking stool there, which someone once said to me, every room needs a milking stool. Which Why? I don't know, <laughs> but that seems to be... I mean, everywhere I go now, there is a milking stool. Uh, oh, um, but I think that's <laughs> almost the only How many people in this room have got a milking <laughs> stool so far? <laughs> I'm definitely they will, get uh, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's the only piece of furniture they brought with them. <laughs> now, we're going to move on. We're going to go. Thank you okay, very much. We're moving on. We're now, I think, going to an Emily project. Yep. I know this house because it's um, eight miles from where we live. And I, did I read in your book that you did 60 rooms we did. in this house? Well, yeah. can you tell us about what it was like before, what you've done? This is one of the most famous houses in Worcestershire. Yes. The model for Brideshead Revisited, where mm -hmm. Evelyn Moore used to stay. 
it can't be, it must be grade one at 10 times yeah. over. So what yeah. could you do and how did you approach it? Well, so, so what was interesting about this, it's an enormous house, obviously, um, and steeped in history. Um, and the, the, the most important point really is that the new family living there was the, I can't remember how, what generation it is, 19th, 20th, but they'd lived, the family's lived there for mm. a thousand years. And so this young couple with a young family took it over, um, inherited it, but it was um, Im impossible to live in in this day and age. Uh, it was the, the kitchen was in the darkest, gloomiest, north-facing uh, room with windows at high level and really sort of depressing and ghastly. Um, but it's a beautiful house and it's open to the public. And so our task was to bring it up to uh, the 21st century and make it livable in mm. for a young family, which meant that it didn't want to be too smart. Mm. Um, it didn't, and it needed to, to work. And so um, when I went there, actually, the architect had designed it and put the, left the kitchen where the old kitchen was, the staff kitchen with no mm. view. Um, and I said to our client, this is just wrong. It just mm. can't, you can't live like this. It's going to be a nightmare. Mm. And she, sort of, she said it was her glug moment when she realized yes. that we had to then reapply for planning. And we got mm. permission, luckily, to put the kitchen into that sort of that far right bit. I don't know if you can see, but the far yeah. right of the picture is one of the main principal rooms. And we managed to get permission to put the kitchen in there. What was it before? In there. It was, um, it was a reception room, yeah. um, but actually one of the old aunts, Auntie Cootie, had, be, I think, um, been living in there with a, a carer. And so because they'd actually had a sort of change of use, that they let us, they let us do it. And so um, the other point is that it was very spooky, this house. And, and I sort of, I hope it doesn't matter mind me saying this, but it was properly spooky. And we, uh, so, so we had to take that on board as well and try and oh. kind of lose the ghost. There's a lot of crystals. We had a special lady with crystals, which we put in all the windows. Mm -hmm. And there were crystals everywhere. And it, it, it works. It's now got the most wonderful, happy family, unpretentious, wonderful atmosphere. Um, so this watercolor is of the bedroom above the kitchen. We sort of made a house within a house so that it had... A, a typical family house, bedroom, bathroom, bedroom, bathroom, and a laundry room, playroom, and kitchen, all in one section um, with one bridge over the moat. I mean, it's not normal, but it's mm. as normal as you get in a <laughs> house with, 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 with you know, stately home. 90 new bathrooms. Yes. Yeah. And, and then we developed all of the way. We made a huge amount of lovely, lovely guest rooms, which you'll see in the book, um, and more on our website, but because they really wanted to use it, which is your point about your... Um, mm lovely yeah. project, that they want to be able to give sort of weekend house parties with loads of people and just properly use it every, every now and again. Um, so this has got fabric on the walls and matching fabric to the curtains, and it's very English, unashamedly English. And there the whole it is thing. in real life. And there it is in real life, exactly. So I think it looks even better in real life than in the uh, drawing, as a matter of fact. I do. It's, I think it, look, it looks... It, the thing is, it's got these incredible lovely. views, but it, you can go big on decoration in a house like yeah. that, because it's, it's, got, it's you know, it's, you, you, know, you can go for the full pattern and not... This not may pair. seem a very, very strange question to ask, and maybe no one else would identify it with it. But when we try and do rooms at home, I, we yeah. find it very difficult to agree on one wallpaper for a room, say. You know, we, I mean, yeah. we spend quite a lot of time, we narrow it down. If you're doing 60 rooms, you've got to do so, have so many different schemes in your head and things that you like and things that you... But that, I guess, is what you do. Well, that's... A, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the, the best bit. Um, all those lovely different colours and schemes and fabrics and things for that. And actually, when we say 60, what we did was we took... Yeah. For every sort of three room, we tried to bash two together, make a really good bedroom, and then a bathroom. Because, mm. of course, none of the bedrooms had bathrooms. Mm. They, when we walked in, they had wig stands and a chamber pot. Um, that's how, uh, you know, it was like, <laughs> like people had walked oh, out of there and hadn't come back in. And it stuck, was just absolutely amazing. And this is the part yes. of the kitchen? Yes. So this is the kitchen in that fantastic end yeah. room that... W that kitchen goes into the dining room and basically if you did nothing went nowhere you could live in that room it's just 
Yeah. Wonderful. It's got lovely books all around it and cream panelling. Um, and um, actually, the owner, Lucy, sculpted those lovely handles of leaves. And we had them made in bronze for her to put, you know, in the thing. And no, it was, it, it's, it's a, you, this you know, amazing perfect. light that looks like it's to do with the Prince of Wales. Yes, I, I, I think it, it came from their previous house. I can't remember where it came from, no. but it's bonkers. <laughs> and so why not, you know? I don't think we've got a picture of the drawing room or that big staircase room with that. Oh, uh, staircase hall, Because didn't yes. you make the biggest, um, I think it's got huge sofas, yes. like enormous. Yes, Where did enormous. you get them made? Um, I think, well, I knew you were going to ask me that. This is when Kate gets the giggles because she thinks that I can't remember anything about where we get anything made. <laughs> I think it's probably written on well, Kate's sheet. Well, I've got it written on we pro Yes, Kate's got it all sorted. <laughs> I should yeah. think we had it made by, in fact, we had it made by Simon, the upholsterer, at the uh -huh. upholsterer studio. I'm pretty sure we did. But they seat about six enormous. people. Them. I know, enormous, they're giant. Enormous. And you know it's got no windows. It's got, do it's quite uh, weird. It's got yeah. black panelling crystal balusters, exactly, yeah. and yeah. domes in the ceiling, so very strange and amazing. Um, well, it's a brilliant job you've done there, if I may say so. Let us move on to a, we're going to look at an expensive London house, um, mm. because this is a smart London house. This was, Kate, your job. This was a project of mine, yes, which is in Eaton Square, and mm -hmm. when we first, so yeah, so there are six countries, six towns, um, and this house, in fact, we'd been to before, which happens quite often. Um, and I had, this, this had been apartments, and I had yeah. done the first and second floor apartment about 10 years before I came to see the house again. Um, it's unusually deep, this house, because mm -hmm. it also incorporates the Muse house behind. So what we did is that we built across the garden and incorporated mm -hmm. the Muse house and also took three floors down. So it, is, it was a very large building project it went three huge, floors down it it does now go three floors down yes God. so there was an enormous amount of re uh, configuration <laughs> um but this is i suppose the scheme for this is is the fact that that stone is is in a very mm. traditional pattern mm -hmm. but because it's a honed portland stone in one color it makes it modern um, and, and then those doors that you see on the right pocket back into the joinery in the dining room, which makes the hall feel wider. That's one of the things mm -hmm. about London houses, as we all know, they're mm -hmm. quite sort of narrow as you go in. Mm -hmm. And then those pier mirrors in bronze that we had made also help to widen the ski, also widen so the wall. So you set the door, I'm, I'm only just noticing now that you so set the door, set the door back. back. Exactly, and then it yeah. pockets back into the joinery. So it does feel like an extension of the hall when those doors are open. And then everything is just on a sort of enormous scale, really. Those uh, van der Straten pendants, which go all the way up the stairs, are very large. Um, and now, and then the walls are stucco plaster, which now have huge canvases on them. Yeah. And then that goes through to the kitchen at the back. Um, so it's a, it was a fabulous house to work North on. North or south Eaton Square? It <laughs> is south Eaton Square. Mm -hmm. Never very good at North or South. I'm a woman. Now, tell um, us about this amazing model. So this, in fact, is a new kitchen which we put in. So I think one of the things about sort of modern is really how we live in houses today. And it's all about, we find a lot of clients now want large, informal entertaining spaces where everybody can be together. And so this, we actually knocked out quite recently what was the spare bedroom and bathroom and uh, a smaller kitchen and have made this into a huge space. This kitchen is interesting because it is made in oak and mm -hmm. also in clefted cedar which you'll see is the island which is um can only be done by the imperial japanese workshop um the, the joiners there God. so the shelf at the back is a five meter Whoa. long mm -hmm. single piece yeah. of cedar which was even shipping that was quite a uh, a saga so it looks like a tree that island yeah that you, mm -hmm. i mean if you could I always have the urge to sort of zoom in. Heavily textured. Yeah, it's amazing. Not done with And salt. crazy marble. Yeah. Um, and onwards. And then, and and then onwards. the bedroom, yes. I think one of the things that I find quite important to sort of keep a kind of uncluttered and rather calm feeling room is that you almost create datum lines within a room so you don't have mm -hmm. too many different heights of things. And so when considering this room, I really wanted the curtains on the bed to hang at the same height as the curtains at the window. Um, and that bed we had made by Kaizen Furniture, mm -hmm. and it's all fabric lined, fabric walled uh, with bespoke 
applique trimmings on uh, the curtains and on the cushions on the bed. It's all one fabric. So it feels very calm. When you said the two light. curtains hanging from the same height, I'm just trying to understand that. Is that that you would you normally have it lower or well or sometimes they might be, they, and I find yeah. that slightly sort of confusing. So I think yeah. both Emily and I, when mm. we look at projects, you know, particularly mm. on boots and things as well, we quite like to have but you, you know the yeah. you've also got the same curtain pole. That's yes, point. exactly. Yeah. Do you see so same that just yeah. gives you less to think about? Yeah. So then you're yeah. it's a calmer feel is, is the fewer elements, as it were. I think that's what's Absolutely. clever about it. And now we're moving on moving to on. Uh, an Emily project in Earl's Court. Tell us what it was like when you discovered it and how it came about, because there was a funny story. Um, the, how, what it was like was it was, a, it was it, it's an extraordinary project because it's a house built over four gardens, sort of along, so completely unusual. You come through a door in the wall and it's like a barn, and, and you wouldn't know it was there mm. a, at all behind. And this was a couple who are great friends, actually, and he had lived there um, previously, and she was the girlfriend at the time. And she, we all thought the house was absolutely amazing. We thought it was completely wonderful. And she said, no, 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 <laughs> this won't do at all, because the kitchen was in the basement, and she's a really good cook. And she said, I just, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be down in the basement. I want to be, as you said before, mm. all th room, everything, everybody in one room and her at the center of it cooking away. And so she, to our amazement, she, she managed to persuade him that mm. this was a, a good idea. And we ended up completely rebuilding it, taking off the whole of the back of the house, which is glass um, now. So mm. completely modernizing it. So it went from being rather sweet and nice. And, um, and then luckily, the happy ending is they got married halfway through the process. So it, all things being equal, it, had, it, it, was, it, was, it had worked. That I'd managed to yep. meld the two tastes of these two very different people because he was very old fashioned and loved his sort of old fashioned place where he'd always been. And mm. she had much more forward thinking modern ideas. Mm. And yeah, there it is. It is. Yeah. Um, and, and at the time, they, when they started off the project, they really didn't think they could ever agree on anything. And so I think it was great that they ended up loving the house and getting married to boot. Um, so that's, that's what, uh, what happened here. And here is inside. That's inside. That's looking, if you can see right the way through to the glass at the back where the kitchen is. And down to your left is a light well with an amazing um, sculpture by somebody called Jordi Raga, who's brilliant, and then a huge piece of uh, timber made into her desk. And then to combat the glassiness of it and the mm -hmm. um, slightly you know, noisy, echoey feel, we put you know, cherry-colored velvet on the walls, which is mad, but you mm -hmm. know, see, it's great fun. It's a really fun house. And has that done the trick of oh, yeah. making it? Yeah, it feels really calm and quiet mm -hmm. in spite of all these things going on. So no, it's lovely. That's the kitchen. Um, so when you're in the kitchen, she now is in the kitchen cooking away, um, th there's a glass balustrade, and mm -hmm. then you go down just a few steps, and the, then you're into and the then garden. You're into that garden. So you've got those two yeah. levels, which is something that we've, we've done a few times. You'll see in the book, there's another project, not dissimilar, where, which allows the, both floors to interact with each other, as well as everybody in the, in the room. So no, it, it kind of works. We're now going to look at two, the final two houses we're going to look at are both abroad. The first one, I think, Kate, is one of yours, and this is in the Caspian Sea. It is. This is an enormous house, huge, um, which took four years to build. We worked with an architect in Istanbul as well as an architect in London, which wasn't without mm -hmm. its issues. Um, but it, when I first saw the plans for it, it felt to me like a sort of John Lewis at home or a car showroom or something. Mm. Yeah, you said it was like Tesco. Yeah. <laughs> said, said, oh my God. to make it slightly more at market. <laughs> um, those are five meter high glass uh, doors at the end overlooking the, the sea and the beach. So it really was an exercise in trying to sort of cozy it up and make it into a livable space. All the furniture in here is enormous, vast in scale. Um, and yeah, it was a challenge. I mean, we put timber on the ceiling to try and help the acoustic. The thing about where this is, 
is that it's very hot, but it can also be very windy. So mm -hmm. everything, you, nothing can rattle or shake. Um, and we added texture to the walls with stucco that's woven leather and silk above the fireplace. And then I felt that it needed curtaining of some sort just to soften the glass. So I said to the team in the office, what I want is string vest. I want string vest at every window. So we found all these fabrics, which are what I call string vest, sort of linen. Um, and those just sort of soften the glare, just, you know, help with the sound. But it's... Uh, with yeah. the owners, if you, you say that you're going to put string vest at every window <laughs> yeah. of, of this giant house. I probably um, describe this in a slightly they, different way to yeah. them. <laughs> do you show them a piece or do you just say you're in luck when oh, yes, I'm no, now no. ordering 12 no, miles no, of string we, vest? No, no, we show them everything. Yeah. I mean, that's really important because you yeah. have to have sort of, you know, just for, for us, for the business side of things, you have to have sign off on everything. everything. Yeah. yeah, it's really better if nothing is a surprise. That's um, the point of the watercolours as well. Is yes. that it really helps illustrate what they're What's going to coming. get at the mm. end of the day, and they can visualise themselves. Um, Had they seen a lot of your work before? I mean, where, where they, they'd been to other houses yeah, so that you're done? And actually, this particular client is, is somebody who I've worked with for eight years. So yeah. she, they're always pushing the boundaries. They're great to work with because they want something new. They really sort of push us to be the best designers that we can be, and it's yeah. all about the details. I mean, even that kitchen, because it's so high, just putting a normal kitchen in with cupboards you can actually reach look ridiculous. So that wall is actually tiled in ceramic embossed tiles, even above the high units Gosh. and on the backsplash, yeah. which just sort of helps sort of ground the whole thing and, and work the scale. Um, what's quite now, nice is that, the, yeah. do, sorry, don't, what's quite nice is that, as Kate said, those are repeat clients. In fact, nearly everybody whose houses are featured in the book were working for at the moment, it, yeah. even some of them, you know, oh. we, we, re we realize that after that. Uh, that is an incredibly yeah. good fact, actually, well, isn't it? Have you it, it means that we haven't pissed them off too now, much. Now, tell us about the Sardinian <laughs> house, which, by the way, I wish was mine. I think it looks quite lovely. Oh, right, like the the project you'd like to take home. <laughs> yeah. You know, like a dog well, I'd, I'd like um, to take all of them, actually. Yes, so this is, this. this is Sardinia, um, and it was, there was a house there, and it was mm. um, a small farmhouse. Um, and then we wanted to make it bigger, not surprisingly, but we were uh, restricted by planning. Um, you had to have, a, you couldn't really make it bigger as a truth. But so what we did was we created all these outside spaces which don't count as um, a, a, in the square footage um, count for planning, up yeah. so for mm -hmm. planning. So every room has got a lovely big sort of um, patio balcony yeah. veranda outside overlooking the, the view and then it was all about the whole sort of design scheme was about using natural materials mm -hmm. and for the house to kind of follow the line of the hill so that it didn't stick out and look too yeah. garish and too too anything um, and then what's sort of interesting I think is that everything is done in plaster so the floors you see that sort of rather shiny gray yes. floor that's not stone or anything it's all plaster it's all like like a like they use concrete, but it's actually it's a, sp a special type of, yeah. of, um, of plaster. And everything was molded in that. And you'll see when in the book that, that all the um, sort of the baths, the showers, that yeah. everything is sort of, sort of molded in this amazing um, plaster, polished. Um, feels great on your feet. Um, yes, and that's the that's lovely okay. sort of outside place where you have lunch. And there's lots of different places where you can have lunch or breakfast yeah. or whatever, depending on where the sun is. Um, and that's an outside kitchen, and it's got, I don't know, it's the dreams thing. It's got the drinks fridge and the fridge and the barbecue and the pizza oven, and it's just, you know, lovely. And right in the vegetation, that's kind of right out, right out in the sort of tree bit. Lovely. So nice. And these are two bedrooms. So that, yes, so you can see that that sort of bench seat underneath the window is made in that plaster and then it yeah. goes up into the desk which is all made in the plaster and the walls are in the plaster and the floors in the plaster and then these little alcoves are all sort of formed in in the plaster and the bookshelves everything is 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 made in in, in it including the beds so um lovely simplicity yeah it's very simple very did and you then, style the books in the little 
Okay. Well, they didn't have enough. I think we had yeah. to the photographs. That often happens. Yeah. We take the photographs before they've got everything in there. Yes. <laughs> so there's a little bit of pushing books around to make it look pretty. But it looked good. Yes, and then this is from the outside, and you can see the, yeah. the outdoor spaces are the, the, important, um, the important part. With, um, and lots of considerations in summer houses that you don't otherwise have to think about. You know, mm -hmm. the mosquitoes and the... And just the damage done by the sunlight. The, the sunlight and the sea mm -hmm. air. Yeah. And the what can you do about that? Is that? Does that change the choice of fabrics yeah. and things? So you, you, you can choose clever materials for mm. outdoor use, which are very light, fast, and, um, yeah, because you have to think about practicality. Otherwise, you'd come back every summer and the whole thing would be have rotted and um, yeah. start again. Um, so... Well, there is your amazing book. I want to ask you now about, your, about clients, not any particular client, but I'm interested. What happens if there's a husband and a wife who have really quite different views? Do you sometimes find yourself awfully caught between them? Um, do people take you aside and he says, I'm paying, so can I please have the whole There have been some quite tricky moments. I think sometimes we feel a bit like marriage guidance yes. counsellors. Yeah. But usually I find that one takes the lead. Um, I think it quite often has to be that way. Yeah. Um, and actually, I found that I quite like working with men. I find them slightly mm -hmm. less emotional um, sure. and uh, <laughs> sort of probably more pragmatic about making decisions. But, you know, it depends, yes. And do you want them to have ideas of their own or do you ideally prefer them to have only the sketchiest ideas? For me, I really like the client to know what they want, yeah. but to trust us to deliver it. That's the best sort of plan. It's like a sort of um, a get-to-know-you game when you start yeah. with a new client. You've got to try and get under their skin and imagine them walking into the house on the mm. day that you, you know, you, you've Take the it. big reveal. Yeah. And you've got to try and work out what they want to feel, what they want mm -hmm. to feel on that, at that moment. And then as they start to live in the house, that it works for them. And, you know, you've got to try and just suss them out and sometimes yeah. they don't know what they what what they want but mm -hmm. but you kind of bring that out of them gently gently by showing them pictures and showing them images of other projects and discussing how and we get mm. to know them really well yeah, i mean I we bet. know yeah. everything about you know how many people they have looking after them or not or yes. their children or their animals or their you know everything you and, and you go and see that do you go and see their old house, their yes. first, their yes. yeah. And do you sometimes, um, be honest, do you sometimes come in and you have that sinking feeling because you think it's such a long way from what you could want? Or, yeah. I mean, or, or are they throwing themselves at you knowing that they don't want what they've got, but they've seen things you've done and they long to be... I think so. I think people, yeah. a lot of people lack confidence ah. and therefore they come to us to, to sort of get that right for them. But, uh, yes, I don't think I've necessarily... I, sometimes there are things that they have. Sometimes I find art, art is a very personal thing. Sometimes yes. I look at that and think, goodness, how are we going to incorporate that into the um, well, That was, in the fact, scheme. the very next thing I yeah. was going to ask you. Do you look... See, I would imagine you sometimes see two china vases that you especially hate, and you'll think your reaction is, oh, I do hope that isn't coming all the way yeah, to the Yeah, I have had <laughs> moments when I've said to Kentucky and Tate, can you actually drop that box? Oh, you can't! <laughs> <laughs> very, very good. I... <laughs> Awful, we'll never get another job. Um... Now, tell me what a bad, Emily, this is for you. Tell me what, uh, um, so, that I, so that if ever we have help, um, so the one isn't one. What does a bad clown, what is a bad clown like? Is it that they're indecisive, or they have inherently bad taste, or they, or they keep rethinking? They, you know, you show them something and they say yes, and I then mean, they say actually yeah. about that red stripy fabric. Yeah, um, I mean, the thing, the, the thing is that, uh, that you know, a client is only as bad as we are bad at making them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, you, you might have somebody who would be hopeless and maybe has been, even with other decorators, mm -hmm. which has happened a lot as well, has been a really 
tricky, difficult, unhappy client because yeah. they're nervous. They don't know quite what they want. They don't know what it's going to look like when they do. They're nervous about mm. making decisions. Mm. And But if we do our stuff properly, mm. we can A, read their mind a little bit. It's a lot mm. of that understanding, as I said before, what they, mm. what they want, and then presenting it properly so that they... That's why those amazing watercolors, which are painted by somebody mm. called Marianne Topham, and mm. um, uh, you know, th if if they can look at that and feel confident, and, and say, okay, okay, if it looks like that, I'm 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 all right. I can do, you know, that's that. I'll pull back and stop uh, b being, you know, difficult. Then, yeah. then it works. So I think, in a funny way, we're quite sort of known for being able to deal with the, the somebody who might have could be construed as being tricky. tricky. Yeah. Yes. But we have to be quite careful in it because of what we say. You know? All clients. <laughs> no, you do. That's, I and, that, that, and that's why I'm <laughs> probing a bit. Yes, you're But probing. I wonder what happens afterwards. I mean, say you've done the most, you, you've worked for three years and you've, there's the most wonderful house and everyone's incredibly happy. Yeah. And then when you come back and see it 18 months later because you're in the area and they say, do yeah. come and come and have lunch and you see two or three or four things that they've added, because people do add things, yeah. do you say something? Do you have that sinking feeling inside? Do you remember the rubber plot? Do you, do you remember the, Scotland? What, the, oh, what, and uh, the manoir, Raymond Blanc. Yes, Bless him. We yes, loved you said him so the same. much. Because you, you, you do these so brilliant great. rooms at the manoir, yeah. can't say it's not. Um, but then the ho uh, housekeeper adds he, rubber plants, well, which yes, you don't like. Yes, yeah. the rubber, yeah. uh, rubber plants. And, which and we pass out every time. And they're always back in again. Yeah, and Kate hates, what do you hate, the plastic bags and the bins that's you get a oh, sort of rage yeah, about plastic oh, bags <laughs> yeah. yeah all the practical what elements what should one have by the way in a bin instead of plastic? <laughs> nothing uh, you nothing at all it's just yeah. the bin yeah. no, and good. what do you do with children who put apple cores into the bin no, i find in our house we sometimes <laughs> end up with an old tesco bag yeah. that someone has put into yeah. certain children's Kate rooms. Yeah, try to avoid kind of <laughs> thing. it's annoying isn't it they shouldn't they shouldn't be allowed to live in such a nice house. Do you ever go back and look at work that you've done 20 years ago and your taste has shifted because your eye, I imagine, is always changing? And do you look at something and think, I wonder how I ever did that? Or do you look at it as the most beautiful period piece and you can remember exactly what you liked about it at the time? I think definitely more of that. I think, and, uh, yeah. you know, something that we're probably quite known for is that the, uh, the interiors that we do are quite timeless. So hopefully they don't look dated quickly. Yeah. And we do often refresh things for clients and so you might change things a bit but but as long as the bones are right in the beginning and the lighting is good mm -hmm. and uh, the finishes are really good and the quality of the work is good then houses last a long time and they can just be tweaked a bit and still look mm. who influenced you both as I mean, who do you who do you regard as each three decorators that you particularly admire or at some point in your life have been important in helping form your thoughts. Emily first. Um, gosh. Um, Can't you say, we say the same people? Mm. Well, I suppose well, John Fowler, maybe. Yeah. Country yeah. House. Yeah. Yeah. David Hicks would probably be another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We um, do say the same people. Maybe Mongiardino, maybe something like that, or mm -hmm. uh, uh, old, one of the old Italian ones, lovely, or... Um, I've got a really testing question. Oh, God. Oh God. <laughs> if you had to d have we someone can't. else that wasn't either of you decorating your own house, oh. I can't quite imagine why this would come about, <laughs> but say that you did, you were too busy, it seems so improbable, to decorate <laughs> your own house, who would you go to? Actually, that's quite easy for me. Okay, yeah. you can if it wasn't Emily. No, well, it can't be Emily. Yeah. That would be um, too absurd. Then <laughs> we do tend to decorate each other's houses because it's quite difficult to make decisions for yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably say now, um, my great friend, Veer Granny, who's my neighbour in Suffolk, and mm -hmm. I love what he does, and I'd be very happy to put for him to add his touch to my house. Emily. Um, I'm unprepared for this. I think... <laughs> I think I would probably ask one of the girls that we've trained. Yes. 
I would say. Oh. Which is a, yeah. um, this, isn't, this isn't a po Very political good. thing. Very good. sneaky. No, no, no. no. But yeah, some of them are good so answer. good. And they've, they've been with us and then gone off and done their stuff. And yeah. there's two or three that are, that are really brilliant, yeah. I think. So... Um, so one of them, probably. We're very have supportive. You, then. Ever, and I want you to be honest on this question. Have oh, you honestly. ever made, have you ever been halfway through doing something and you think you might have made a slight mistake in one room and that it doesn't all, it, and, you, and when it goes, when it's there, when it's installed, you suddenly have a very slight sinking feeling? Or does that simply never happen because... You're so, because you plan it so carefully and you know what you like and, and you can visualize it completely. Um, you? I don't. I think, I think there are moments, but there's always moments. There's never a, it's never always plain sailing. Mm. And you can put something in and it looks slightly different to s in, in your head to what you'd imagine. But there's, if it's, if it's sort of acceptable, and you put the right thing next to it. You know, if it yeah. looks too big mm. or too standalone or something, you can, you can move. Th we do end up moving things around. Yeah, and you sometimes we don't necessarily make all the decisions. You know, you might leave. Yeah. Yes, you want to leave a few end. things. You need to, really. Yeah. Um, um, but I think that our process, and particularly by doing the visuals, really does help that because you, you, are, you are in the room when you're looking at those. And, and do, everything's drawn on plan and everything is scaled. And, yeah. you know, we're very, very careful about it making sure that it, it all fits and works mm. and, you know. So, I mean, hopefully that sinking feeling doesn't ha happen. But, you know, mm. it's, it's never always the dream. You know, ne there's never a job that goes completely and utterly smoothly one beginning to end. There's or always I mean, sometimes something hitch. arrives that looks completely different to how to you what expect you were it. Expecting. Because yeah. the yeah. wrong colour fabric has been sent or something. So and then you send it back, happens. I would assume. Yeah. Then you can send yeah. it back. But, yeah. you know, no, not, I don't often mm. walk in and think, oh my God, why did I do that? And I want to ask you finally a, a rather technical question about, I don't want to know exactly how, but I would like to have some notion of when somebody comes to you as a client for the first time, there must be a moment fairly early on, I would hope, when you give them some idea about what the whole thing might cost. And in my experience, people don't always have a very clear idea, especially, I suspect, men who've been working in investment banks or something and mm. are just not used to it. Is there a moment when you, you want to try and plant so that it's not a horrible shock for people later? Yeah. That would be, which very often decorating sort of is a bit. We, um, almost, <laughs> we almost always tell people what we think yeah. it's going to cost. As closely as you can. Yeah. With yeah. all parts, including yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. And um, you can work it out on a per square perfect. foot basis and you yeah. can work out what percentage of fees and... Um, and we only ever charge a fixed fee. We don't ever mark up anything, which means what makes us quite different to a lot of other interior designers. Yep. So it's completely um, open book policy. So yes, I mean, yeah. And we quite often scare off a client, but uh, like that, probably by mm. being a bit too honest at the beginning. But it's much better to yeah. to know what you're in for. Yeah, cost and um, time actually, how long it's going to take as well. And, and it doesn't matter, though, to us whether people, you know, you can say, look, you can spend between the X and Y um, so we, to give them a, a ballpark. And it doesn't matter to us if they don't go the top end, even though yeah. we do do very, you know, very expensive jobs. Um, for us, it doesn't matter at all if somebody wanted to do, um, you know, a lesser project for, for whatever, for less. For whatever yeah. reason. For less. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, on um, that highly optimistic and um, thrilling note. I'm going <laughs> to say note. how extraordinarily good I think this book is. Oh, and thank you. And oh. I once again commend it to all. <laughs> and thank you so very much for talking so openly and so interestingly about your projects. I'm sure we would all like to thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you. What a wonderful session. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Kate, for opening the door to some of your favorite yeah. projects. Um, town, country, Caspian Sea. Um, you really do create spaces that you want to be in. Um, it's very instinctive, but I have a feeling there's a lot of meticulous detail that goes into all of this. <laughs> uh, and I'm not Absolutely. surprised that your clients come back again and again. 
Nicholas, thank you for leading this deep dive so brilliantly. As you say, their work is the exact opposite of a one-note piano. Mm. So, the modern English book um, is hot off the press. Um, sadly, we don't have copies here, but you can pre-order them. And um, I think we've got some book plates as well. So, if you want to pre-order, then we're going to uh, bring a little table across as well. Um, and as I would agree with Nicholas, I highly commend it. It's a beautiful, mm. beautiful book. Let's give our wonderful, wonderful guests, Emily, Kate, and Nicholas, a, a jolly big clap. Thank you. Hold on. You're very good.